welcome back to our channel, Doom Productions, home of the No Budget Film School. And today we have another filmmaker hangout for you. Um, and it's a little bit different today. Usually we have at least two people on for filmmaker hangout, Ethan and myself. Um, except we are busy. We're about a week into shooting Ethan's feature film, The Bell Rings. And this is his first big production as a feature, essentially. He did House, of course, which you all have seen and remember. If you haven't seen it, check it out. The link will be in the description. I'll put a card up. Um, but he did that all by himself with the phone. I kind of came in near the end with some music help, but that was all my involvement. Um, but it was, a, it was a very stripped down production. And, um, you know, October, Oh Brother, Video Carnage, I directed those. And, you know, Oh Brother was all by myself as well, but there was a, quite a bit of moving pieces in Video Carnage and in October. So, um, I know how busy and stressful that can be, especially when you, this is your first time doing it. And filmmaking, doing the movie has been super duper fun. Um, very hot, very sweaty, a lot of hard work, but very fun. Ethan's doing a great job. You all are gonna love it. It's gonna be really, really fun. I can't wait to show you all. I wanna play for you the music that's in it and I wanna show you clips, but I, it's not my movie, so I'm not gonna do that. So, um, to spare Ethan the extra stress of doing this and doing some videos along with the prepping for bell rings and preparing and everything and editing. Um, it's just been me this week. So if you saw the last two videos we did on this channel, or I guess I did, um, it's just been me and just because Ethan's busy planning the bell rings because there's a lot of stuff going on. So today I wanted to talk about something that I, th that's really important to me, not so much a filmmaking tip, but I wanted to highlight some films that I thought were really important that I, at least to me, that I think you all should check out. Um, before I get there, I want to tell you all a little story about um, some Cambodian history. So, if you don't know Cambodia, it's a little country right next to Vietnam and Laos, so it's Southeast Asia. And in 1975, a group of soldiers uh, rolled into the country and pretty much took over. Um, led by Pol Pot, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And he had this concept, now correct me if I'm wrong historians please, because I might be messing all this up. This is just what I've been told. Um, Pol Pot had this idea of setting the everything back. So everybody was like equal, but not equal in like a good way where you'll get resources, equal as in you guys are all slaves pretty much and doing hard labor out in the rice fields all day. So what happened was they rolled tanks into the cities and they would send people out to camps, kick people out of their homes. And they'd bring you to these checkpoints and there are certain qualifications where if you met any of these check boxes, bang, you're shot pretty much, you're killed. Um, essentially they wanted to get rid of any uh, intelligent people, so any academic people. So if you were an author, if you're a filmmaker, if you were a politician, you're gone. If you had glasses, because glasses were a sign of intelligence, you were shot. If you even looked smart, you were shot. And so those who remained were sent out to these camps to work hard labor, hard labor. Um, very, very dangerous. The country has been still dealing with the effects of this ever since. And that's where my family came from. My grandfather was a politician and he was able to escape with some of our family members right before the tanks rolled in. Anyways, uh, we came over here and we were able to help some other families come over here and we've been living here and that is why there's a lot of uh, Cambodian immigrants living in America but also all over the world because it's a pretty messed up country in terms of its history. Um, the saddest thing, or one of the saddest things I should say, is that because of the Khmer Rouge's desire to wipe everything out, set everything back to the zero year, they burnt books, they got rid of records, they got rid of art, and included in that is movies. So there is an entire uh, cinema of Cambodia which is just lost and forgotten, just absolutely gone. Uh, same thing with the music industry over there. There's some gorgeous recordings, beautiful music come, that came out of there that is just gone. A lot of the art is just missing. And so that's been a huge kind of um, real sadness in my life is that, you know, I'm a filmmaker and I want to know what kind of movies um, 
you know, my people made over in Cambodia. So um, I've looked into it and the films are very hard to find. They're either very poor quality prints um, or they're in Khmer, which is the language of Cambodia, which I don't speak. Um, I'm learning, but I'm not, I'm not fluent in any, in any way. Um, and, but the good thing is I can speak French and a lot of the prints have French subtitles because Cam a lot of French people uh, came over to Cambodia and I think colonized it a while ago. Um, anyways, um, my point is there's not a lot of Cambodian movies out there. The films that have survived, I'm, I'm very precious about and I cling on to. And I'm not sure how accessible those movies would be to everyone else because obviously not everyone speaks the language, not everyone can read the French subtitles, and not everyone has access just to watch all these movies. But what's good is that now that time has passed, there are Cambodian filmmakers and there's people who are telling Cambodian stories, and I wanted to highlight uh, five films that are really important to me. These are new movies that are being made that have been made in the last 10 years or so that tell Cambodian stories, and we don't see a whole lot of that these days when it comes to mainstream movies. In fact, that's one of my dreams is to be able to tell more Cambodian stories in cinema. So without further ado, I just wanted to share these recommendations for you all that I think you all would enjoy. Um, yeah, so first up, Don't Think I've Forgotten. This is a documentary on the music scene in Cambodia, the rock and roll music scene. Essentially, uh, Cambodia had a very lively rock and roll music scene with lots of garage bands, lots of beautiful music coming out of the country. The philosophy from my understanding at the time was no one from that country expected to necessarily make it big like musicians did in America. So all they worried about was, let's just make the best music we can. Let's have a fun time. Let's party. Let's celebrate. And that comes across in the music. So check out the movie Don't Think I'm Forgot I've Forgotten, along with the soundtrack. Uh, the next movie I want to recommend is also a documentary. It just came out last year, I think, or this year, called The Donut King. In this one, it's about um, one guy who came from Cambodia who started a donut factory or a, a donut shop in California. And if you didn't know this, it's kind of a stereotype and a really popular thing for Cambodians to own donut shops. And this documentary goes into why that is and how that came about. And it even tells you why donut boxes are colored pink. The third movie is also a documentary, but it's a really interesting documentary. Not, like, not that the other two weren't interesting, but this one has a really interesting spin on how it presents things. It's, it's called The Missing Picture. It's directed by Rithi Pan, and it's essentially all audio. So you're hearing stories from survivors, who, of people who survived the camps, who survived the killing fields. Uh, goes into the kind of what happened there, and it depicts it all with clay miniature figures, which is a really interesting and really haunting way to portray everything. Um, very, very beautiful. Uh, not so graphic as you can, um, as it could be, because it's all clay miniatures, but that impression just is just enough to kind of really horrify and shock you to find out what happened in there. The fourth recommendation I have for you all is probably one of the most popular ones in recent memory. It's called First They Killed My Father. This one is actually directed by Angelina Jolie, of all people. I think it's because she adopted a Cambodian boy, so her son is Cambodian. And if you didn't know, this is a really famous book about that was written by a survivor of the killing fields. And uh, it's for Netflix, so you can check it out on Netflix. And it's just beautiful. It's gorgeous. You know, that was a book that I really wanted to turn into a movie myself for a long time. And But I finally watched it. Um, a few years ago, probably about a year after it was made, and it was, it blew me away. And now it's like up there with one of my all-time favorite movies. So she did a great job directing it. Check out that movie. And the last recommendation, this is a movie that came out, I think, I think it was made in 2018, but it's just now um, in the last year or so been readily made available to people, which is called In the Life of Music. This is an intergenerational tale, which is about um, one generation of a family during the killing fields and the Khmer Rouge occupation, and also um, an American, or I guess North American um, immigrant, or someone who's first generation born in outside of Cambodia, who goes back to the country to kind of visit with her family. 
very beautiful movie about music. It's all centered around this famous uh, song by Sin Sisla, who I used his cover of House of the Rising Sun in Oh Brother. Um, it's got Ellen Wong, who um, I think she's half Chinese, half Cambodian. And it's just a really great movie told throughout generations. So if you're into that kind of intergenerational tale, check it out. Um, but yeah, so those are, those are the five movies that I'd recommend. So don't think I've forgotten Donut King, The Missing Picture, First They Killed My Father, and In the Life of Music. Um, but yeah, these are important films to me, and I would love it if you all could check it out. So that's today's Filmmaker Hangout. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure I've got some of the details and dates a little bit wrong in the history. I'm not a historian. This is just stuff that I've heard from my family. So if you are interested, check out those movies. Go to the Wikipedia page or or pick up a book and read some actual history. Don't listen to me. I'm just a filmmaker. Um, and yeah, listen to these stories because I think they're pretty important and pretty cool. So I'll see you guys next week. And until then, have a good weekend. One more make me good.